What is happening everyone? So, as you know, we're back in the UK, back in the office, so I just thought I'd give my wee breakdown of the World's Strongest Man final 2023. For me, getting to the final was, was uh, yeah, felt really good. I think you could see from the celebration that I felt really pumped up. You know, going up against Big Gav, who I have nothing but respect for, you know, a fellow Brit, an exceptionally strong athlete as well, so for me managing to beat Gavin and, and get into the final to secure my fourth final is no small feat, so I feel very proud of myself. So going into day one of the final, we kind of get up and the weather, um, you would have probably seen the weather wasn't the best. Um, I just felt a little bit groggy, I don't know why, just maybe a little bit kind of more sleepy on the Saturday. Um, so we got down to the venue. Uh, it was decided not to do Fingal's first because of the, the safety kind of uh, worries and the safety concerns with doing Fingal's in the rain, which made sense. So we decided to go and do the shield carry first. So for me, the shield carry, I was up with a big Evan. It, it was okay, you know, it wasn't a great performance. Again, I was maybe a little bit kind of sluggish off, off the bat, just maybe not as kind of pumped up as I should have been. I don't know if that's maybe from having a day rest on the Friday, um, kind of your adrenaline kind of, kind of drops down. But still, it was a relatively decent performance. A little bit hard to see um, big Pavlo, old handsome Pavlo, you know, getting penalised. Uh, you know, it's a difficult one because obviously Pavlo never crossed the line, but for me, Pavlo, should have won the the shield carry. You know he was the the best athlete at that event, and and I think that he should have won the, the event. Um, but the referees had to make a decision, um, and you know it was decided to penalise Pavlo um, in quite a severe way, I guess, which then meant that. Um, I believe Mitchell won that event, and we could have we could sit here and say I should have done better, Tom should have done better, Pavel should have done better, Mitchell, you know whatever. But the the way it was, um, you know, I think I finished towards the end of the pack. Tom got second, Mitch won that one. Um, but for me, I, I feel. Yeah, a little bit sorry for Pavel. You know, it was just one of those unfortunate situations. And, you know, the referees at World's Strongest Man, as as well as athletes, we all try and do the best job we can. And I know Dave Warner, nothing but love and respect for Dave. And Dave does the best job he can. Um, and hopefully, you know, we all learn from stuff. Athletes learn everything. Sorry, athletes learn from every show that we do, as referees do as well. So maybe in the future, you know, there's ways and means that we can kind of um, make it a lot easier uh, for the athletes to see when they've crossed the line. Because I think when we carry such a big shield, it is difficult to see if we've crossed the line um, without slowing down. So I think Pavlo tried to keep his speed, turn and then go back. And by him keeping his speed, unfortunately, he never crossed the line, which, again, is one of those things. Uh, and I'm sure... Pavel will be kicking himself. Second event, we had the deadlift, so it was like a deficit deadlift, the Canuck deadlift. Um, it was about 360 kilos, 363 kilos for reps. I, I was up against Big Brian, myself and Big Brian went out, it was pouring with the rain at this time. The warm-ups had gone well for me, felt pretty comfortable, warmed up to I think 320, 330 kilos, nice and comfy. But just got caught off guard I think a little bit with the deficit of the deadlift. That's something yeah, I really need to put the work in um, in this season to, to kind of get better for next season, which, you know, it is what it is. Again, credit to Big Mitchell for smashing out, I think he did 8 reps with this one, so great performance from Tommy as well, you know, Tom putting in a, in a statement, I think, in the deadlift, you know, we all saw Tom at the Arnold's a few weeks ago, how under par I think his deadlift was, and I don't think Tom will mind me saying that, but for him to have a few weeks training and come out and smash the deadlifts the way he did, I think, again, credit where credit's due, I think that's a huge improvement for Tom, and yeah, really, really proud of Tom for putting in the work, and kind of going, going to those dark places to, to smash out that, that reps. And it was pretty cool to do deadlifts with Brian, again, in the pouring rain for me. Yeah, it looked, it looked pretty cool doing that. I should have got another extra couple of reps. Um, but yeah, just wasn't firing as well as I should have done. Um, we get days like that, which is a bit of a pain that happened at the the first day of the final. I was happy in the sense that I didn't let it kind of get to me. You know, I knew that I could 
still kind of get that adrenaline back, still get that aggression back, and it was slowly coming back. So yeah, deadlifts was okay. Then on to the fingal. So the sun, thankfully, had come out. It dried up everything. It was you know we all checked the ground. It was all safe. The fingals were dry, and this was this was a cool event. Um, I got four fingers. Not in a re not in that fast a time. Should have been faster one of those things but to see Tom come out and smash it the way he did that was that was really impressive so yeah that was a great great performance from from Big Tommy coming out smashing the fingers like he did and that was the end of day one so everything was pretty tight everything was kind of I guess all to play for going into the the next day um, so we went back to the hotel did some hot and cold got some physio got an early bed early to bed woke up in the morning a lot more energy which I, I felt I knew was going to be quite a good day for me so first up we started with the max dumbbell I guess there's a lot of chat online about you know the refing and lockouts and all this kind of bits and pieces that's going on um, and during the actual the event of the dumbbell you know I was getting fired up I was really you know pumped up and um, shouting and you know shouting for Tom and trying to G up Tom and I felt really like full of energy, which which I love it when when I feel like that, I, I feel really good, really kind of psyched up, and and I, and I feel it's kind of is lost a little bit in in the kind of you know the oh, did they lock it out? Did you lock it out? Was it a good rep? All this kind of stuff, and and I think at the end of the day, as athletes. I think if we have the ability to go and question everything that the referees kind of they do, I don't know how I feel about that. I think we can open Pandora's box where it's going to be, well, that's not a good lift, that's not a good lift. I've recorded it. Look at this. Look at you know we've got to have the ability to trust the the referees. If they give us a rep, they they believe in themselves that you've locked it out, you've controlled it. And again, we're talking about you know. 120 plus kilos in one arm you know we don't want to be holding it for three seconds you know that's not it's not needed so if, I think if we if we lock it out for that split second show control good rep down then that for me that's a that's a good lift obviously that's just my opinion I think I probably got awarded a, a week a week rep I think all of us did you know to be honest um, Tom did Evan did Mitch did you know, all of us athletes, you know, we all do get awarded maybe debatable uh, reps sometimes, and that's just the way it is. And for me, I don't like it when we, as athletes, have the ability to go and record each other's lifts and be, you know, going up to referees, oh, look at this, this isn't a, this isn't a good rep, this isn't a good rep. Because again, it depends on what angle you take it from, it depends on what, what viewpoint you've got, all this other stuff. So. I think sometimes it gets a little bit heated, um, which which is good fun, you know, because when people get heated, when we get a lot of emotion and, you know, everyone's pumped up, that's when you know that it means so much to everyone. So, you know, both Tom and myself did really well in this event. We've now got the British dumbbell press record, which is pretty cool. If you ask myself or Tom coming into this event, if we'd have that record, I don't, I, I don't think we'd see the possibility in that. But um, I just missed out. I locked out the 140 kilo uh, dumbbell. Magnus started to take his hand down. You'll see in the TV, and then he took it down, and I dropped it. And then he gave me a no rep on it, which you know that is what it is. I'm not going to challenge that. That was Magnus's call, um, and it's one of those things. But for me, the confidence there that I can press 140 kilos is huge now. So. I know that I'm one of the best pressers in the world, not only on log press, but on dumbbell press as well, which which is a huge boost of confidence. And I think it's a huge boost of confidence for Tom as well. So, um, you know, so hats off to Mitch and Big Evan for taking the win in that one. They, they both pressed really well. They did enough to get a good rep. And, you know, that's that's all I can say about that event. But yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty cool. It was a cool event to start the day. And then the second last event of the finals was the truck pool, um, or the bus pool, sorry. So Matthias, he tested it, we watched him te uh, pull it, really fast pull. The referees and staff decided to release some air out of the tyre, which um, then in turn makes the, the pool harder. So we then went up. There was a group of us 
um, on around 32 seconds. You know, when it comes down to stopwatch, um, you can be 0.2 of a second out here and there all the time. So, for me personally, I think this some this is something that should be addressed by World Strongest Man. We should have laser timing. It just takes away any doubt in the timing. Then you know, so if you once you start moving, once the bus goes through that laser, that's the start. Then once it finishes and goes through the end laser, that's it. There's no, we can't dispute the times, we can't look back. We know 100% what the time is. And and I think that's a very easy fix. I really hope that's something that they'll kind of look at and, and kind of utilise um, going forward. Because again, it's not fair on the referees to, like, be held accountable for that you know the referees are doing their job but there is things that we can put in place I believe um, so I think that would be an easy one for us to do and then as athletes you're 100% happy you know there's no question about times because Tom and Evan they got exactly the same time which is um, you know it can happen but very very rarely will it happen you know when there's a group of athletes on roughly the same time I would say to maybe make it a little bit heavier or a little bit longer the course but again with with the guys at Worlds they're kind of told this is a bit of land this is the ground you've got to pull a bus on this is the implement you've got to pull and then you've got to, they've got to make it as best they can so it's not like they could change the bus at the last minute or extend the, the length that we could pull it um, so it's kind of one of those things unfortunately but yeah Mitch smashed the event really good time uh, I think Big Tommy got second in this one so it was it was definitely the, the Tom versus Mitch show uh, the final of Worlds and so the Atlas Stone with the running um, this seems to be the, the thing that Worlds like to do now I had the, the great privilege of going up against one of my heroes in the sport Brian Shaw it was his last stone run at World's Strongest Man so a very surreal moment for me to, to go up go up against Brian and you know unfortunately we didn't manage to load the fifth stone we both lo loaded four stones Brian had an epic stone off battle against Round the Heinle, um and the stone off going into the final so I think that took it out of him and yeah I had a bit of a stone off battle with Big Gav so that probably took it out of me but really buzzing to go up against Brian the way we did and big honour for me to, to to compete with Brian to to get to speak to him, to call my friend, to support him, um, it's a huge honour for me. So, something that I'll take with me to to the very end of my strongman career for sure. And then the the final battle, as it was probably always going to be, was Tom, Tom and Mitch. Tom did all he could. So proud of Tom and his performance, as he always does. He won the stones, um, but unfortunately this year it wasn't enough to to take the title. So from the Tom that we saw at Arnold's a few weeks ago to the Tom that turned up at World's Strongest Man and, and for myself, you know, the, the person I turned up at Arnold's to the person that turned up at World's who were both different beasts, you know, the amount of people that would have even doubted us getting to the final, you know, and now Tom's second in the world, finished podium, this is his fourth year on the podium at World's Strongest Man. This is my fourth year in the final of World's Strongest Man. Um, it's no small feat, so it's something that we're both very proud of. Is there work to do? 100%. Is there more that we can do to get better, to be better prepared for next year? 100%. And that's the that's the exciting thing now. So that's why we've decided to do a lot more shows. But with that being said, you know, it was a great World's Strongest Man. I'd like to take a wee minute to congratulate the new World's Strongest Man, Mr Mitchell Hooper from Canada, I think. An exceptional talent. I think we can all agree that you were the the best athlete. I think at World's Strongest Man, and that's why you won it. And yeah, really happy for you. Proud to see the improvements that you made on yourself last year as well. I think it's it's a huge testament to you as a as an athlete. Congratulations, Mitchell Hooper. Hope you enjoy your one year of being World's Strongest Man. Because 2024, we're coming back for that title. Thank you for watching, guys. Please smile. Stay safe and stay spicy, and don't forget to ring that little bell. Ding -a -ling -a -ling. Guys, so today I'm gonna to walk you through the log press. Hey guys, this is week one of the Atlas Stone tutorial by Tom Stoneman. Right guys, today's tutorial is 